That's Admiral Analog's Audio Assortment here in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Let's see what I just picked up in there. I'm here in Martinsburg, West Virginia, in my hotel. I just went for a swim, hence the goggles. And um, while I was here, I decided to look around if there were any record stores nearby, and there was one maybe maybe 15 or 20 minutes away in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. So I drove on down there to Admiral Analog's audio assortment shop to see what they had. It's a really cool little town. It was like kind of on a hill. Uh, lots of shops and restaurants and stuff, and at the very top of that hill sits Admiral Analogs. Um, outside, he had a table full of, um, why am I still wearing these? <laughs> um, like a bargain table right out front there, and um, CDs were like a dollar. I think the 45s were like a couple for a dollar or something like that, but uh, uh, dug through there first, then went inside. Really cool store. It's kind of like this old... Uh, you know, storefront, lots of stuff everywhere you look. There's records and CDs, and he's got a, a lot of, like, used cassettes, if you're interested in those. Uh, and I really, uh, really dug this store. I thought they had a really good selection, new stuff, used stuff. Prices, I thought, were really good, too. If, you know, I found a lot of stuff pretty cheap, spot on. New stuff seemed priced pretty, uh, pretty well as well. So, uh, you know, really cool shop if you're in that neck of the woods, Shepherds in West Virginia, by all means, you should check it out. And now let's check out what I picked up. First up from 1995, we have the Joan Osborne CD Relish. And if you watch my videos, you may have seen one recently where I talked about um, this CD, the Sophie B. Hawkins CD, and the Sarah McLaughlin CD from like that 95, 96, uh, 94 or whatever period and I always see those three in shops used for you know uh, cheap and I, I always kind of like think about buying them and then I change my mind and when I was at Gruvacious in Utah um, I picked up I finally said screw it I picked up the Sophie B Hawkins one and kind of felt like you know if I see those other ones and they're really cheap I think I'll finally maybe pick them up because I've always been a little curious about those records they all have like one or two songs that I thought were decent um, this record uh, was one dollar it was outside in that bargain bin that I mentioned and I just was like one dollar you know I'm, n I'm not gonna find it cheaper let me just finally dig in and uh, pick it up. I haven't had a chance to listen to this yet. I really haven't had a chance to listen to any of these because I'm still out here on the road. Um, but I'm curious, you know, I always thought she had a pretty good voice. Um, those tracks on here that I remember getting released, I mean, the song One of Us was huge. I and mean, the guys from the Hooters co-wrote that. Um, and I kind of liked that one. And the other one was Right Hand Man. I remember that being released. And I don't think that did as well, but I always thought that was kind of a good song. I mean, she. I don't know what else is on here, but like I feel like there's going to be more of maybe right hand man kind of music, like almost kind of bluesish kind of almost that kind of sound to the songs, as opposed to more one of us kind of songs. I could be completely wrong, but something just tells me there's maybe stuff a little bit more in line with the right hand man. But uh, you know, like I said, one dollar. I was finally going to pick it up, and I'm curious to really hear this one. From 1993, we've got the Bodines and their album, Go Slow Down. Um, I remember the Bodines, a couple of songs of theirs from like the eight, late 80s maybe or something like that. And I finally just recently, when I was in Las Vegas at Zia, I found one of their CDs and I picked it up and uh, I like it quite a bit. So when I saw this there, I decided to grab another record by the Bodines, and this one, like Joan Osborne, was out in the bargain bin, it was one dollar. So again, it's like one dollar, I mean, even if it stinks and there's one good song on it, that just seems like, you know, wasn't a waste. This has the song Closer to Free, which in 1993 was released as a single, 
didn't do much, and then I guess three years later they uh, decided to use it as the theme song for that show Party of Five, and then they re-released the song and suddenly it was a big hit. Um, I don't know how it affected the sales of this record. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Party of Five put out like a soundtrack, so maybe all the sales went to that as opposed to this, but um, you know, again, I'm really curious to hear this, produced by T-Bone Burnett, or executive produced by T-Bone Burnett, who I think did their um, like debut or something, so they brought him back into the fold, so be interesting to uh, check this one out, see how it sounds. 1984, we got some vinyl, we've got some Billy Squire showing some signs of life. <laughs> And uh, I like Billy Squire. Um, I remember buying this when it was released on cassette, and I and I like this record a lot. Of course, this is infamous for the uh, song "Rock Me Tonight." The video is infamous. It's a great song. The video, you know, there's been much said and written about that video and what impact it had on his career, but whatever. Who cares? It's a great song. Um, so I saw this and it was three dollars used it's in really good condition so I decided to grab it you know I, I like this record a lot and you know I don't think I have any Billy Squire and vinyl records really clean so I just thought it'd be kind of cool to have you know and again the price you know how could you go wrong for three dollars so some of the other tracks on here all night long I remember liking Eye on You, Reach for the Sky, Take a Look Behind You I think my other favorite tune on here is Sweet Release, which ends the album. I really always like that one too. 2005, we get My Morning Jacket and their album Z. Um, this one was not in the bargain bin. This one was $5, pretty good. Um, I had one song from this record called Off the Record, and I really liked that one. And you know, five bucks didn't seem too bad. I mean, I know this record is really popular. They're kind of like alternative, maybe a little bit of like psychedelic kind of sound to them. Some cool little cartoons in this book. Um, so I don't really know a whole lot about them. I just know that this album has a lot of accolades. A lot of people loved it. Um, the band's pretty popular, has a pretty big following and uh, you know, I just thought uh, $5 seemed pretty good. I think this was like the first thing I picked up uh, there in the shop. You know, I'm really curious because uh, I really don't know what anything else is going to sound like on this record. But, you know, be curious to hear how this one goes. I'm really looking forward to checking this one out. 2012, we get La Serra's album, Seize the Light. And this... I can't remember where I first heard La Serra. It may have been on New York Movies, I'm not sure. But I do know that the first song I ever heard by La Serra was the song on here called Break My Heart. And I really like that. It's kind of alternative, kind of indie pop, kind of rock sound. Um, I have one other album by La Serra that I like a lot. Um, and I saw this there, it was used, it was $15. I decided to give it a crack, you know. Uh, try it out. I always say give something a crack and whenever I go back and watch these videos I'm like, why do I say that? Like give something a chance makes more sense or give something a try or give something a spin But I always say give it a crack. I don't even know where that came from it's Stupid. I don't know what's wrong with me. The other cool thing about this was it had the digital code in it And this record came out in 2012. It's used so I was sure that the digital code wasn't gonna work, but lo and behold it worked, so I got the digital tracks as well, which is pretty cool. I really like uh, the stuff that I have by La Serra, so, you know. I think they had one other record by La Serra there too, and I think that one was also 15 bucks, but I decided to not pick up both of them, you know. I was trying not to spend too much, but the prices there were really good, so I didn't really think I was going to break the bank in there either, but we'll see. Maybe if I really like this one, I'll go back and grab the other one. 1989, we get Robert Palmer's compilation, Addictions Volume 1. And I don't know if there's a Volume 2. I wonder if there is, because there's been so many bands that have released like greatest hits records and called them Volume 1. And then it's almost like a curse. There's never a Volume 2. It's like they're setting themselves up for failure. But uh, I'm not sure if he released a Volume 2. Um, this was in that bargain bin, one dollar. 
his career sort of got that bump in the 80s from being in the power station and suddenly it kind of felt like it kind of put him back on the map. I had the power station and liked it back then and then when he put out the, his first solo record after that which was Riptide and it had a lot of the people from the power station working on it, you know, Bernard Edwards I think produced it and he had some of the guys from the power station playing on it. Um, and I really liked that record when it came out and then he put out uh, Heavy Nova, and I bought that on cassette, his follow-up, and I wasn't too crazy about that one, so that was kind of the end of uh, my interest in Robert Palmer and his music. Um, but, you know, he had a whole career before that, and that's what a lot of this represents. And I'm not that familiar with a lot of these songs. Some of them I, I know, but most of them I don't really know, so it'll be kind of curious to, you know, dive into this and check it out. And again, one dollar, I mean... You know, how can you go wrong? 1972 brings us Benny Hill, Words and Music. I mean, I saw this there, it was $2, and I was like, come on, man. <laughs> you gotta get that. How can I not? How can I pass this up? Um, I liked Benny Hill when I was a kid. When his show came to the United States and it was on, uh, you know, I used to watch it quite a bit. And it was funny, it's amusing. It's almost, a lot of it's almost like watching old silent movies in a way. Um, I never even knew this thing existed, you know, and uh, when I was flipping through there and saw it, I just, it brought a smile on my face and I just had to grab it. I, n I really don't know what I'm in for here, you know, to be quite honest. And this is a reissue from 1980 on Capitol Records, which I'm guessing this was reissued in 1980 probably because that's around when his show came to the United States and, you know, people here started kind of tuning in and becoming familiar with him. Um, and his comedy. And the record's really nice. It's on Capitol Records here. And, you know, again, two bucks. I'll take it home and listen to it. Maybe it'll provide me with a smile or a chuckle here and there. And if it doesn't, if it's kind of lame or whatever, you spent two dollars, who cares, right? And from 1979, we have the records and their self-titled in the United States record called The Records. This is a gatefold that comes out like that. Some girl here looking very new wave-ish and almost 80s, even though this is 79 on the back. Um, I knew one song from this record, no one song from the band, The Records, uh, called Starry Eyes, and I heard it on a music podcast years ago, and I always liked that song never dug any further into this band. Um, kind of power pop, new wave, that kind of sound. Um, I've seen this record and I've been thinking about picking it up for a little while now. And I've spotted it in a couple of stores and sometimes it would maybe be priced a little higher than I want to spend or it's maybe a little beat up. This is in pretty good condition and it was $3. Um, so I was just like, you know, this was the moment. It was like, this is, you know, now is time to buy it, you know, it's, you know, you're not going to get any cheaper, it's in good condition, and, uh, you know, it's time to check out this band and see what they're about, and the record is pretty clean, they're on Virgin, if you couldn't tell, and there's some lyrics and stuff on the back here, and, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy to finally have this, I'm really looking forward to getting home and putting this on the turntable to check it out. Now, the interesting thing was when I took the record out uh, to check it out, when I was going to put it back in, I sort of like got snagged on something. I'm like, what's that? What is in there? And I look in the uh, record there and all of a sudden I realize there's a 45, like a bonus 45 in there. When I got this, I reached out to uh, Hannah, the Omaha introvert, because I knew she was a fan of this record and this band. And I mentioned to her, and she was like, yeah, I haven't been able to find one with that in there. It's even got the little 45 thing. Um, and I was like, oh, damn. I was just like, yeah, I didn't even know this existed. So, you know, it's pretty cool. This is a limited edition. I think maybe the first 25,000 uh, in the U.S. pressings had this included. I think in the U.K., I think it came with like a bonus 12-inch uh, you know, maybe that's what the gatefold was for, you know, if on this side there'd be the the um, 12 inch with the bonus tracks on there. So it, it was a surprise, it surprised me. It was kind of cool that it was in there, you know, You'd, some, things like that, same like with the digital code still working for Lacera, things like this 
when you're getting something used and it's that old, I mean, what are the chances this thing is going to be in there, you know? So, yeah, it was really cool. I'm really looking forward to uh, checking this out. And I was reading that this record in the UK, it was called Shades in Bed. That's what I was referring to earlier. Um, I don't know why. They do that a lot of times when they put out stuff in the U.S. They, you know, uh, if the band is released, it's like their debut or whatever. And in the U.K., the album's called Whatever. And then when they put it out in the U.S., they just make it change the track listing and they make it self-titled. I don't know why, what the point of that is, but whatever. That's what they did. So really good uh, pickup. I'm really happy with that one. Happy with all this stuff that I got at Admiral Analogs. Got some stickers, too stick those on my suitcase or what have you and uh really uh you know great shop like i said prices were great selection was awesome can't beat it i would uh i would love to go back there someday you know um if you're familiar with these records let me know what you think of them if you've been to admiral analogs i'd love to hear your take on the shop and otherwise thanks for watching we'll see you next time i'm gonna jump back in the pool i was about to <laughs>